Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the structures or body parts of animals and how they help them to survive. <music> half-sized human children. So here is the dilio. You probably noticed that there are a lot of animals in the world and that they are all different from one another. They are unique. So for example, an ant is a type of animal. Insects, we don't often think of them as animals, but they are. Uh, and an ant is an insect that is very different from an elephant and yet they're both animals but see an elephant couldn't wouldn't do well in the same places that an ant lives and an ant wouldn't do so well in the places where an elephant lives so if i took an elephant and i stuck that poor elephant underground and uh, tried to make it i don't know live like a hive animal and do work for the queen elephant it wouldn't really work and if i took an ant and puffed it up really big and set it out on the savanna, it wouldn't survive very long because animals are adapted to their environments. They have specific, a specifico uh, parts, body parts or structures that are designed to support them and that allow them to be successful in their environments. So we can look at some examples at such as, well, we're talking about an elephant. So let's continue talking about an elephant. An elephant is a very large animal. It has specialized teeth that are designed to grind down plant material. Why? Why do they have teeth like that? Well, because elephants eat their herbivores. They eat plants. They eat like leaves and hay and grasses. I guess only hay if they're kept in captivity, but grasses and things. And they don't eat meat, so they don't need sharp teeth. Can you imagine like vampire elephants running around with sharp uh, fangs? That'd be pretty weird. So they are adapted to live in an environment where there's a lot of food. That's Their bodies are so big. It takes them a lot. They have to have a lot of energy each day. has to be a lot for them to eat. If I take Mr. Elephant and I throw him into the ocean, because I am nice, and I chuck him, push him off the boat into the into the water, and then I zoom my boat away and say, goodbye, elephant, good luck. What's going to happen? The elephant's not going to live very long because he's going to uh, swim for a minute because elephants can actually swim a little bit. And then he's going to get tired, and he's going to sink, and he's going to drown. But if I take a fish and put him in the water, it's no big deal. Because fish, they are adapted for the water. They have body parts or body structures that allow them to survive in the water. A fish has gills. And gills are a specialized organ that allow the fish to gather oxygen out of the water and use it like we have lungs. Okay, most fish don't have lungs. There are a few that do, but most don't. And uh, so the fish use their specialized body parts, their gills, to breathe uh, oxygen out of the water. Well, if I take Mr. Fish and I throw him into the savanna, and I say, here you go, fish, you are taking the place of the elephant because you are on a, you're an exchange student. And the elephant's going in the ocean and you are going on the savanna. How well is the fish going to do on the savanna? doesn't have lungs. It's going to flop around on the savanna for a little bit, and then it's going to get stepped on by one of the elephants, and it's going to die. Well, and even if it didn't get stepped on by the elephants, it would die because it is not adapted. It doesn't have the right structures or body parts in order to 
uh, thrive in that particular environment. And that is the key thing that you should be thinking about when you are looking at animals in each environment is what structures do they have? What body parts do they have that are adapted to allow them to succeed in their environment? And you can literally think of any animal and you can find some structures or body parts that they have that are adapted to their environment. So let's do some quick examples like, uh, I don't know, a monkey. What parts does a monkey have? What body parts does a monkey have that allow it to thrive in its environment? Where does a monkey live? Well, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them live in trees. And so they have like long arms and they can swing and they have tails. And many of them have prehensile tails, which means the tails can grab onto things. And uh, they're designed to hold on and swing from branch to branch. And so they are successful in that environment. But if we take a monkey and we stick it in a different environment, maybe it's not going to do so well. Pick another animal at random. Uh, what's your favorite animal? Uh, I My favorite animal is, a, is an adorable otter because they are so cute. And they are adapted to live in the water. They have very thick fur and oily fur that keeps them from getting wet when they're in the water. They can uh, hold their breath for a long time. They can dive. They float in the water. So they have these body parts that are designed for where they live and how they interact with the environment. And if we take them and either uh, handicap them by causing damage to a body part or remove them from one environment to another, they're not going to do so well because the environment and the animal go together. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.